Alright, good morning. This is Dr. Nautz. Today I want to teach you about the double helix system. And I want to teach you about the witch's web, which is the complicated aspect of it. It's the part of it that most people don't understand. And it's the part of it that most counselors never fix or even know exists. Um, the reason why the monarch is so complicated is because it has such an intense backup system. Now, if you remember when we began, began discussing the kaleidoscope, we discussed the pyramid going up, the compass, the pyramid going down, the square, and hell, earth, heaven, the rod that goes up. We also discussed the four worlds that surround uh, the brain and um, basically showed the schematics for the kaleidoscope. This is the brain stem right here at the central fissure point is where the original split happens about three-eighths in um, in the autonomic system so it's a part of the no conscious part of the brain. They take then and they develop these four worlds through a series of splits, uh, each world representing something. Those four worlds will be consisted of four main parts split out of the part in the center, and then out of these four main parts will be 12 alternate identities that are split, all replicated of one. So there'll be one main one and then 12. Each one, as it is split out, is not as strong as the one before it has less consistency, less dominance, uh, less substance. Well, the reason why the system is so effective and why it is so complicated is most people do not understand what a double helix system really is. In the uh, beginning of this video, I have a picture of Ashtaroth from a clay tablet that's, you know, from like 3000 BC. And it shows the trident pointing up and the trident pointing down. The trident, of course, on each side join and they have six stars around them symbolizing the pyramid up, the pyramid down, and the triune unholy trinity. The Satan, Ashtaroth, and Beelzebub. So, Today I want to show you a little bit about why it is so complicated and um, hopefully you'll understand. When they create a double helix system, it looks like this. Here's the central fissure point of the brain stem. Okay? Here is the left hemisphere of the brain, here is the right hemisphere of the brain. They duplicate everything from one side to the other. Except, typically in most females, the night side is going to be on the left, the PM. The daytime person will be on the right. They may often say, well, I see myself on this side, or I see myself on that side. Well, that's because you're looking at a mirror. The person cannot diagnose themselves and help themselves. Um, supposedly, many of the experts today will try to have them do just that. And the reason why they never fix these people, these women or men, is because they have no idea what they're doing. They cannot diagnose themselves. They can't see the hidden things on their own. If you don't know it's there, you can't help them. That's the way it works. It doesn't volunteer anything. When something's asleep, it's invisible inside the system. You can say, well, I pray and ask the Lord to reveal it. doesn't mean they'll have the ability to see it unless God specifically brings that to light. Because there will always be things that volunteer themselves so that nothing happens. Now, here we have the original point of separation, or what we call division within the brain, creating bicamerility. For instance, I conducted a study last night on a uh, monarch that I basically finished with. I got her down to just her two main parts, the person on the left hemisphere, the person on the right. Everything's com 
taken apart, dissolved, and, and eradicated on the left and right hemisphere. And um, I hypnotized her. And as I did, it was interesting, the, the, uh, the idiometer, idometer, would, when I asked a question for the, about the right side of the brain, it bottomed out, completely hypnotized. Left side of the brain, it went past the scales ability, past the two. Even at half, it went beyond that, which means it was not only wide awake, the left hemisphere, it was fully aware. So, they're split, they operate separately. The reason is, is during the day you'll have Isis or the goddess. She'll be dominating the right side. During the night you'll have Sheba, also known sometimes as Lilith, Elvira, symbolizing Elvira Cunningham. Um, those are typical names for the one on the left side. Isis, of course, is the goddess aspect. Uh, Shiva would be that of the mother, which joins the earth and all of the creation on, that's on the earth, the animal kingdom, plant kingdom, angelic kingdom, to the person. Down here, where the original splits happen, they'll split the infant, so you're going to have an infant on both the left side and the right side. Out of that infant will be split two uh, main parts, okay? Um, but first, this infant will be split into a three-year-old. This one will be split into a three, to a three-year-old part. The three-year-old parts will be split into two. So if the person's name is Sandra, you'll have, or Sandra Marie, you'll have two Sandras on each side, creating four. Okay? Now, out of those four will be split, uh, on each side two, will be split two worlds each. That's why you get four worlds, one, two, three, four, you'll have four worlds on each side replicated. It's called mirroring and twinning. The reason why they twin it is because if you twin it, it has a backup. And one side can always work on the other. Also, if you twin it, for instance, you need to fuse the person who's out during the day so you can use them. Say it's a beta, a sexual unit. Well, you need the primary part put to sleep. That's why you need to have, on that side of the brain, a three-year-old that is given over to builds above the devil, Satan, and Ashtaroth, or Isis, or Lilith. And it can demonically fuse the person that is the presenting altar, allowing for that person to then switch to their beta, which will typically be on the opposite side. That way, the memories are stored over here. They're split between the kaleidoscope of the four pieces, the four parts. When they create the kaleidoscope by having this one split into four pieces, what happens is they then split out of each of those four pieces. Most people call this the core. You know, I talked to a counselor just last week, another one the week before. I was working with the core. I said, you need to get rid of that idea. There is no core. There's a life essence that they were basically born with, but that life essence is tainted because most of them in vitro are zygote, which means they have more than one egg, more than one soul. They also have more than one essence and through hermetic magic rituals. They'll have the essence of the mother, and the sisters and the grandmothers join in them, or the father, the grandfathers, uncles and brothers. Why do they do that? That is the true creation of the hybrid. It's called a chimera. And what they do is they will create those alternate parts that will have the essence and the name of, for instance, the mother, their sister, or even their child will be inside of them. So it attaches them through the sins of the forefathers together. 
I'll continue this in a moment. Alright, so we're going to continue where we left off. And I'm going to explain the witch's web aspect of the double helix now. Um, a witch's web is where not one, but several individuals will come together and do rituals, summoning, making covenants with, putting curses upon themselves and others. So, in a monarch family, it could be the father, the mother, the daughter, the son, siblings. They all join together in worship to summon Isis or Sheba, and they all make that covenant pact and it ties them together. And they'll even say such things as if one falls, the others will still have authority to hold the pact. So what they try to do is make it so that nobody can get out. And they will do not just one, but several rituals. Now if you understand the way this is, each one of these four worlds will have a total of 48, 48 uh, trilinary altars. You'll have the primary altar here, alternate personality, out of which will be split the secondary alternate personalities, the other four, and then you'll have, out of those four, each one will have 12 trilinary altars split. That creates the quadrant. So you have the primary, secondaries, and then the trilinaries, which are the ones in between, 12 each. So what you're looking at is 52 alternate personalities for each one of the uh, pyramids. There'll be four on each side. The helix going up and down represents the pyramid up, pyramid down. Now in between, I had to take a call, so I went ahead and put another uh, image of Ashtaroth there so you can see it and how that clay tablet shows this. Now a witch's web, because they duplicate, They'll have two infants, one on each side. They'll have two three-year-olds, one on each side. They'll have two adults, one on each side. Then they'll have the world split, one, two, three, four, on each side. These will revolve around the center, which is the Earth. So we have the left hemisphere, the right hemisphere, and they will revolve around the center of the Earth. And the way that they do this is when they revolve, they come to the front, which is the conscious, and the other one goes to the back, just like a double Ferris wheel. And that's how it works. One will be in the presenting conscious, and the light will shine through it, which creates the kaleidoscope. The kaleidoscope, of course, is the culmination of all these altars. It will take a fragment and put it here, a fragment here, a fragment here, a fragment here, and create a new image. So when the memories, when that alternate personality that's created from these fragments is decomposed, the memories will decompose with it. Now, a witch's web is so powerful because they will have literally this side, all of these individuals will be taking part. For instance, the three-year-old on this side, the three-year-old on this side will all be involved in the ritual where they are confirmed or ordained with um, the entity. So both sides will be doing the ritual at the same time. And the alternate personalities on each side will take part. So what's the significance? The significance is this. I meet counselors that don't understand why they're having to renounce the same things over and over. Why, if they get rid of a three-year-old, there's another three-year-old. Because, my friend, there'll be a three-year-old here, 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 here. There will be a three-year-old in each one of these places. 
while they're being an adult, while they're being an infant, while they're being maiden, because they they create several of the same units and they put them in all these different positions. By doing that, it creates what's called the witch's web, where all these curses, rituals, prayers, incantations, they all cross and connect all these different points until it looks like a web. The witch's web is what makes the person a complete mind control slave. If one part wants to get free, it's caught in the web. And all the other parts, because there's more of them, will have the greater significance of control. Being that they'll have the greater significance of control, they'll have the greater ability to control the mind, the body, the soul, the spirit. And that being the case, until you break down the system, until you start destroying the worlds, you're not going to have any significance. That's the key to dismantling the kaleidoscope in the inner systems, is you have to be able to destroy the worlds. Sorry about that, I keep getting calls today. Dismantle the systems and work with the primary altars on each one. So I, I know it seems a bit much, to me it makes sense, but hopefully you've been able to understand this. Hopefully you'll understand what a double helix is. Left brain, right brain. How it works with Ashtaroth, the androgynous male or female god, queen or king of heaven, which controls all the minions, the cosmic rulers and their minions underneath them. It's a way of creating the Tower of Babel with the power of hell upon earth within the individual. Hence heaven, hell, and earth. It creates a complete composite the throne room of the God of this world from which he can rule and which he can control that body from. This has been Dr. Tom Knotts. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me through my website. Call me. If you need to be deprogrammed, let me know. I work with people every day, literally every day. I'll be more than happy to put you back together and help you to become one, one mind, one body, one soul, one spirit in Christ. Lord bless you this day.